So on this channel, we spend a lot of time talking about what to do to get a job, steps to take, roadmaps to follow, skills to learn, stuff like that. However, there is a lot you can learn from the mistakes other people make when they're looking for a job. I myself have applied for more than a thousand jobs, been rejected from over half of them, and been a part of various different interviews and hiring processes. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the five biggest mistakes that people make when they're looking for a job. The first and arguably the biggest mistake that people make during their job search process is not understanding that it's a system. When I first started, I had no idea about the ins and outs of landing a job. I initially thought you just have to apply for jobs, eventually you'll get an interview and hopefully one day you'll get a job offer. I quickly came to realize that this was not the case. Most people don't understand that applying for jobs is a lot like playing a game or preparing for a test. Those who know the rules, tools, and strategies are miles ahead of everyone else in the game. I've talked about some of these strategies before in my previous videos like the ATS scan. Most people don't even know that over 75% of resumes are screened out by an ATS scan, so if you think you're qualified for the job and don't receive a phone screen or interview, that's probably because an AI decided you weren't cut for the job. Don't fret though, there are ways to get around this ATS scan and pass the screening through tweaking your resume and uh, including keywords that they may be looking for. You can also use websites like jobscan.co to better understand your ATS score and prepare for the job. This also applies to phone screens and interviews. There are certain keywords and phrases you can use during your interviews or phone screens that will help you get to the next level of the interview process. Sometimes you don't have to be the perfect candidate, you just need to know enough to get you to the next stage. For example, in the technical interviews, you don't necessarily have to get the right answer or have the most efficient solution if you manage to talk through your thought process and show you understand the point of the question and can clearly communicate your workflow, they might be able to guide you through it. Most of the time, they just want to know that you're capable of learning and being thought. Once you understand the system, you'll have a competitive edge that can save you a lot of time and rejection emails. The next mistake I see people make is lying on their resume. Now this could range from anything like a small white lie to something as big as faking your experience. Some people might think that lying on your resume is a harmless act, but if you're unable to back up what you say, you could actually be kicking yourself in the foot. Not only should you expect to be asked questions directly referencing your resume, but most companies also tend to contact your previous employers. You can imagine the consequences and backlash if you get caught up in that lie. The good news is that gaining relevant experience in this day and age isn't as hard as it used to be. I talked about the three main ways you can gain experience in one of my other videos. I'll leave a link down below if you guys want to check it out. Another mistake that people tend to make, myself included, is not tracking your applications. This might seem small, but it actually makes a huge difference. This could be due to a number of reasons. Maybe they hired someone else, or they were just too busy to reach out, or maybe they just forgot altogether. Keeping track is a good way to reduce the number of unanswered applications you have and increase your chances of landing a job altogether. I've seen people track their applications on stuff like Notepad, Notion, or even Google Sheets. Whichever one is fine as long as it works for you. The next big mistake I see people make all the time is giving up too soon. I get a lot of comments or DMs with stories about getting rejections or not being able to secure a job. Trust me, I know landing a job is hard, but 99% of the time it's because they applied for like 15 jobs and gave up. With all the layoffs that have been happening recently, hundreds of people apply for jobs every single day. If you're trying to compete to be that one who lands the job, more likely than not you'll need more than 15 tries. Especially if you're looking to land a big 10 or a fan company. The stakes are a lot harder, you'll be competing with people who have a lot more experience. Depending on the position and the approach you're planning to take, you'll need to aim for a lot more applications. I made a video talking about the strategies I would use if I were looking to land a job right now. Feel free to check it out, I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. Alright, the next mistake I want to talk about is also highly overlooked. It's the fact that most people don't do enough research. In my opinion, the best way to stand out in an interview is doing research on your interviewer. Asking personal questions catered to a specific interviewer has landed me several different opportunities. In fact, in my early intern days, I quoted one of my interviewers from a blog post they wrote, which helped me win them over. Not only does this help you reduce the tension, but it also builds a personal connection with you and the recruiter. This mostly applies to interviews, but can also be used to get your foot through the door. Trust me, a quick Google search or a LinkedIn follow can get you a long way. This is the perfect segue to the bonus tip, which is to be yourself. I personally noticed that a lot of candidates tend to put on a persona of who they think they should be during an interview. This usually doesn't work out because the candidate is seen as robotic or without a personality. Based on my experience and feedback from hiring managers, it's better if you just be yourself and act natural. Don't read off a script, don't try to be a robot. Depending on the position you're applying for, people skills just might be more important than the technical skills needed. If they ask a question about your personal experience, they want to understand the unique experiences you have and what your personality is like. I know some of you guys are international students and being an international student myself, companies in the US tend to prefer more humane or empathetic skills. 
Overall, I think learning from other people's mistakes is highly underrated and can save you a lot of time, heartache, and also rejections altogether. Speaking of rejections, no matter how much you try or no matter how good you are, there are gonna be roadblocks along the way. Try not to take it personally. Like I said before, most of the time these rejections are coming from ATS cans or AI. Usually it doesn't reflect your actual value or experience. It's just the way your resume is worded, which doesn't actually reflect what the company is looking for. Someone wise once told me that you never actually fail if you don't give up. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.